Hi, I'm Mark Baer. You're watching the Your Town television program. My guest, Richard O, a man of many hats, a uh, entrepreneur, a restaurateur, a, uh, you're in the wine business, you're a realtor, uh, you grew up in Pebble Beach, and this is very much the Pebble Beach MO, a man who does a lot of things. So uh, first of all, let's, let's just talk about growing up in Pebble Beach. My dad always wanted to uh, live here. We were living in San Francisco, and he would drive us down and said, we're going to have a house here one day, and he made it happen. And, and your, your dad was in the, uh, the motel business? Yes. And uh, again, another lifelong entrepreneur, and be your own boss. Yes. And yeah. that was kind of drummed <laughs> into you. Just got me to start in that entrepreneurial aspect of, of, of life. Well, let's start with real estate, because you, you are a realtor. Yes. Where we live is somewhere people want to live, particularly after COVID. Yeah. Um, people <clears throat> finding out they can, can live anywhere and work somewhere else, so that's opened up a lot of world. There's a limited supply. Uh, and what you sell, in particular, is a lifestyle. You're an embodiment of a lifestyle, and I believe that's what you sell to your customers. Let's, let's talk about selling real estate here. So there haven't been many times in history when it has been a buyer and a seller's market. There's so many buyers right now, and sellers are getting multiple offers, cash offers, Hundred to four hundred thousand above asking price. It's it has been a crazy market, very hot. Well, one of the things I do know here is that being a realtor is a very, very, very competitive sport here. It's not you've got to be good. You this isn't you don't get to go get your real estate license and say I there's a hot market. I think I'm going to go into real estate. It's it's a lot more complicated than that. It is, but a lot of people have done that in the last year. And who would have thought during a pandemic we would have a hot, hot market. Uh, I've had my license for over 30 years. I did commercial, uh, I was a mortgage broker, and then now in residential market. What, what's your particular specialty in real estate? You know, I, I like commercial. It's a lot easier to deal with. There's not a lot of disclosures. In residential, you have to be really careful uh, of all these disclosures. And so uh, I like commercial a little bit better than residential. And, and you've been a, a, a restaurateur, so you've, you've owned real estate as well. So that, that has to inform a bit of what you do. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've had several homes in the area. Uh, couple restaurants also in the same area here uh, so on the personal side yes I, I've dealt with real estate transactions so it's helped in the sense of selling homes for right others. Because, yeah. and, and because you know what you're getting into yes. you know what the problems are uh, particularly in commercial yes uh, Th that has to build a trust factor with, with, with a clientele. Oh, yeah. And, and the trust factor is everything in real estate. Oh, yes. Because they're not going to use you unless they like you. And, okay, so among your other hats, yes. uh, winemaking. Mm -hmm. And let's, uh, that's a pretty complicated uh, adventure. It is, and it's very competitive as well. Uh, I was a mortgage broker for about seven years. In about 2004 is when I started the, the wine. I felt like that whole industry was changing, and it did. The, that's when the financial uh, crisis happened, like 2006, it started coming out in 2007, and then 2008, it just took a dump. Um, a lot of foreclosures were happening. People were going bankrupt. So I wanted to get into some other industry and I had several friends that were winemakers. They're like, why not start your own label? I'm like, okay. 
So what did you? What do you know now that you didn't know then? Oh my God, how competitive! <laughs> <it is. laughs> Wine making is the easy part. Selling is the hard part. <laughs> yeah, I'll yeah. Bet. Um, so, 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 so let's talk about the varietals that you make. So I do a Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, Syrah, and and off dry Riesling. Where, where, where do you grow your grapes? I don't grow them. I source the grapes and so, make the wines, uh, mainly from the San Lucia Highlands, mm -hmm. which is an amazing, amazing area for uh, wine grapes. I, I don't know that everybody knows, you know, how great our area is with with the Santa Lucia Mountains. Oh yes. So definitely. a lot of grapes that that people think come from Napa come from Santa Lucia. Yes. Yes. Uh, you can use 15% from another region and still call it. So like for instance, Napa uses Monterey County grapes. They've been using it for a long time, but you don't have to put Monterey County on it because if they use less than 15%. One of the other things we talked about before we started filming is um, part of the lifestyle here is community involvement. Yes. Uh, this is what this is what people do when they they get here. Is they they do get involved in the community. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about some of the stuff that you've had to do over the years. So I, I've been involved with probably over thirty different charities, uh, charitable organizations, charitable events, where we're cooking or doing wine tastings at these events and I've I've met so many amazing people through these events and so um, I would love to give back to the community uh, by doing these events and it's an amazing amazing yeah this is very p part of the, the social life here yeah. Yeah. Um, let's let's talk about um, so one of the things that is your particular uh, expertise is, is, is pairing wines and foods. And how, how did this begin? I started cooking early on. So okay. I always wanted to cook with wine and do the food and wine pairings. Well, how, so how did, how did cook? But it really didn't take off until like about 12 years ago where I would have four to six different chefs that would come over to my house. This all started at my house. And they would do a course and I would pick a, a pair of wine with that course. So my challenge is picking a wine without tasting the food. So they would tell me what ingredients they're going to be using, and then I would pick the wine with that. So, so how, how does one develop this skill? Because this is, this is a fairly, fairly rarefied skill. So how, <laughs> how, how, did, how did you get good at this? Uh, you know, you, you got to have the taste buds to do it. <laughs> you got to have the palate. Uh, I have a lot of friends that don't have that. And so I've been trying to teach him about that and the nuances that you need to pick up on um, the characteristics of the wines and the region, the environment. So uh, it's, I guess you had to be born with it, right? <laughs> how, how did you discover that you had this? Um, that came when I started cooking uh -huh. uh, and I, I could pick up different flavors. If I were to go to a restaurant, uh -huh. I can pick up different flavors from the, uh, of the food. And so, oh yeah, I'm like, this would go great with this wine, you know. So it's a lot of wine tasting, a lot of wine drinking. <laughs> yeah, well, it's part of the, it's, it's, you're working here. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's part of the job. Uh, so, uh, how, and so let, let, let's, go, let's step back a bit to, to cooking. Now, where did that come from? My mom's a great cook. She cooks all the time, but she didn't really cook other dishes. It was mainly Korean food that she was cooking. Mm -hmm. uh, probably about 10 years ago, she started expanding on uh, Italian and a little French and stuff, but it was mainly, mainly uh, Korean food. But I wanted to expand that. I wanted, uh -huh. to, I wanted to do the French. I had a classic French restaurant. Uh -huh. and let's talk about that a bit. So uh, my friend, uh, Jacques, uh, he was kind of uh, working for another restaurant and he wasn't really happy there. 
And this opportunity came up where this French restaurant uh, had closed. And they've been in business for probably 20 years in, in town. And I thought to myself, what? I love French food. Jacques, you're not, you're not happy with your current position. Let's open this restaurant. And, and that's where it went from there. <laughs> so you're a pretty bold entrepreneur. Uh, so now you know a lot about French food that you didn't know. Oh my what, gosh, what, what was the name of the restaurant? Uh, Carmel Boucher. Carmel Boucher. Yeah. And that was there for many years. It was there for many years. And then I, it was, I, was, I was disappointed that it had closed. Uh-huh. So, well, but always moving forward and always moving on. So you've, you've, you've started with the pairing show. And now yes. we're talking about how to bring that to uh, uh, some kind of uh, a real show yeah. and, and how, how we're developing in that. And so that's been a, I know that's been a passion of yours as well. So we filmed our uh, third episode last month. Mm -hmm. And I would really love to pitch it off to a network. Mm -hmm. And with this, you can be anywhere in the world and, and do these food and wine pairings. Uh, we can be in Spain and, and go to Barcelona and, and I can go pick out four chefs and go to the wine, local wineries and pick out the wines to pair with that and just... So do you feel that, I mean, this is a strange question, but you feel that you're, you're, you're on that level to do this? I would you, you've like got a lot to. Of, you, I would you've love got a lot to of confidence develop. to do this. I, uh, yes, I do. Yeah, so it takes a lot of ego to do this. <laughs> uh, because it's a, compet a really competitive world. It, it is, but who's doing this? I mean, I mean, I don't know anyone that's doing this right now. Right? You, you can go to an area, I mean, we can go to New York and do this. And I can go around and pick four different chefs or five different chefs and pair the wines with that. Are you, are you, are you a tough judge? Yes, uh, I pick chefs that, that I know and are confident that they can produce some amazing dishes. Yeah, it's, it's, so where, where, where does all this confidence come from? This is really <laughs> interesting because it does, you know, it's such a competitive world and you're really, you either play with the best or you don't play. Exactly. So exactly. That, this is really interesting. And then uh, b because our time is limited here, so we can, let's, let's talk about uh, another passion of yours, which is, uh, which is solar energy. Yeah, I'm just getting into it now. And, you know, we need to look for renewable energy sources, clean energy sources, our environment with global warming has caused a lot more uh, natural disasters. And so this is another form of uh, entrepreneurship that so, I wanted to get into. And, and so what form is this going to take? So uh, I'll be on the sales side of it. Uh -huh. I'll be selling uh, to residential as well as commercial. Re yeah, yeah, so residential and commercial yeah. uh, panels and stuff. Yes, the so, panels. So, so what have you had to do to uh, prepare for this how do, how do you how do you learn this uh, again uh, I got into it through through a friend who who's been doing it for several years uh -huh. and he suggested I get into it and I'm like sure why not and, and so, so how long has this I, been I, going on oh it just started just uh -huh. recently started I got my uh, you had to be licensed to the, uh -huh. the the state and so I just got licensed and um, I'm in the training stage now yeah so what are you finding out what do you what are you learning that you didn't know before uh that it, it actually it's very competitive as well uh-huh and that there are several i mean many different solar panels and the regulations that you have to go through in order to get approved to have solar panels on your roof it's uh you, there's a lot of red tape Basically, you're a serial entrepreneur. So, <laughs> I uh, again, I just find this what, one of the other things we talk about is how many hats, how how this used to be an odd thing to 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 be involved in as right. many things as you are. Right. But I think it's very indicative of of the, of the way people live now. Is they have a lot of they wear a lot of hats and yes. do a lot of things yes. and are involved in a lot of stuff and all very um, you know. It's, it's, it's all very sophisticated, all this stuff that you're in. 
So but I love it. Uh, I love the diversity. Yeah. So any last words before we check out here? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure I'll be picking up something else later on. So stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm with Richard O. You're, I'm Mark Bear. You're watching Your Town Television. And uh, oh, drink, yes. I want to drink the wine and eat the food. <laughs> we'll make it happen. Make it happen. Okay, <laughs> uh, great. Thank you.